Welcome back everybody, welcome back to the Morpha Project, and today we're going to be working on the wood again. So today we're going to be working on this bad boy, so we're going to make sure that all these lovely things are here are, you know, fully colored and correct. So that's what we're going to be doing, and um, let's uh, hope that it is going to be working out fine. So no further ado, let's get started. Hmm. <coughs> So the main issue I had today was actually that it was so windy and uh, so windy and crowded. So it was actually windy, it was rainy, and then I even had to do my I even had to make my dinner my own. Oh well. And after this, after uh, after you know the drawing, actually we need to or oh, I need to actually make sure that I uh, do the dishes, <laughs> which is a thing that I need to do. All right. As you can see, I have been doing something with rulers, so don't get too confused, I was actually working on something. I can show you guys later, but uh, for now I will be focusing on this instead. So we have red, we have that, we have this, which is the color, right? It's the color, yes, it's the color. We don't need that just yet. We need to... We need to Drawing. We need the color. Well, the drawing part we need. We don't need the color yet, just yet. Oh, crap. There you go. There you go. Quickly and easily solvable. The main issue that we have, we could go for we could go for this, and then we can now, you know, do casually color over it. Eh, which works also. Just need to make sure that, you know, everything is all uh, everything is alright. On the latest on the latest stages. So yeah, um Today we're going to be working on this wood, and then hopefully, you know, after that, we can just casually move on with the rest of it. So as you can see, um, a lot of this work, well, a lot of this is all work, but uh, I have been working on some stuff. Wanted to test some stuff out, wanted to experiment with the great almighty, you know, colors and all that stuff. So I went a little bit silly. Um, not here, of course, but in the... Um, in the drawing that I made uh, in the midday, I actually had a lot, a lot of fun with it. It, um, I wanted to see if I could design a certain types of uh, way of making a script. So the idea of making, um, uh, not not a comic, but more like a manga style kind of comic. Of course, you know. The style was not there. It was just, you know, the out, uh, the out, uh, the outlines and all that stuff. I needed to figure out, like, oh well, how does that work, and how do I read it, and how do I make then the story progress? If I would go for such a way, so I did that, and uh, surprise, surprise, it actually worked out pretty well, even though you know it doesn't look like a success. <laughs> Most of the cases it doesn't look like success, but it is looking like a success, so therefore it should be there. Anyway, anyhow, um, so yeah, I was quite surprised upon how much I gained from it, and how much knowledge I gained from it, from doing it. Of course, you know, it was just, you know, doing two or one hour of work, but it, uh, I got pretty far on it, and that is important. So, uh, yeah, after that, after the glorious, uh, you know, drawing part that I did, I uh, actually had to do, uh, make myself dinner, and today I actually made dinner, so I made some uh, schnitzels with uh, mushrooms and um, pak soy. That was doable. 
that was not bad at all. But yeah, the main issue that I'm always facing with, uh, you know, all these, uh, with all these tests or well, drawing test experiences, is like where and how I can focus on it and what I can do with it. And the more I do with it, the better I get at it, and the better I get at it, the better the better it goes. Well, that's the idea. Of course, that idea does not work well when things go bad or things go not in the really good way of doing things. I mean, obviously, if you take a bigger, if you look at a bigger picture, it was like you know, it was still a waste of time. But if you think about it, like, wh why would it be a waste of time, then I could not s see it. It is only that, you know, it has been time consuming. I could have done other things in the meantime, but I was like, no, I wanted to test this out, and I wanted to see, I was curious if I would be able to pull it off. And technically I did pull it off, even though I had no great, even though it was just a sketch, and a sketch-based kind of storyline, so it was not even really well done, it was just like, this happens, this is the follow up and boom that is the end. So it was like in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pictures, I guess. The story was told. Of course, you know, such stories are highly meh. But uh yeah, it was more like uh, a comic story actually. It was more like a a little short a uh, short spot of uh self joy that that I wrote down. The idea was that, uh, you know, the icon that I'm normally using for most of the things, like, you know, YouTube and all that stuff, was um, getting, uh, putting some books back into the place. Alright, so book, putting books, ba uh, putting a book back into the place where the books are standing, so into a book holder. And um, somehow, you know, um, that activated the trapdoor, and that trapdoor, and and then then he fell into a portal because of the trapdoor. Then, you know, he asked his way out, and surprise, he meets a demon and he freaks out because of it. And that is, uh, that's the ending. So technically, it's just you know, a person who just got scared. <laughs> Of course, you know, that's a really, uh, that's just, you know, humor in my case. It's like, oh no, this bo this person, this, this bomb just got scared of, you know, a demon that just appeared in the middle of nowhere. Out of the middle of nowhere. He didn't know that it was a demon. Oh, he should have known, but no, there was no demon. And then there was a demon. But yeah, the, uh, that is, that is some joy that I always like to do, you know. Making my own, making my own humor, because I felt silly. I had no intentions upon drawing seriously. If I would have been drawing seriously, I would have already started with them. I would have done the morning drawing more, but you know, I don't have time for that. Oh well, I want to make sure that I can focus on the Morpha project instead. That is the idea, at least. So thinking about all of this, I. Uh, I worked around it, I made it around it, and uh, sooner or later I will get better at this. For now it is just, you know, casual drawings. The only things that I'm good at are the things that I like to draw, but yeah, I could say to myself that I am indeed a good, a good drawer. I just need to make sure that I draw the right things. And of course I want to learn how to draw the other things, because that's important for me. I need a I need to have a learning curve of what I need to draw and how I can draw it. Now, since that not everybody has their, uh, since that everybody has their own art style and how how to do and how to achieve things, things might not look like they are really well done or how they are done. But yeah, I mean, it is quite fun to see so much stuff going on and then realizing how much stuff has been going on anyway. Now, um, put everything aside, I must say that, um, yeah, the Morpha project is already a big project, but once we're done with the background, we actually should be able to get to the last part of it. The main issue with this, uh, the main issue with the, the drawing right now 
is that we need to make sure that we have from point A to point B and fast. So the Morpha project is not going to be rushed because if I do the rushing part then things go bad. And of course you don't want to have a bad drawing. So yeah. This is why I love my Morpha project the most of the times. It's just, you know, you need to focus on what you need to do. And today it is, you know, making sure that I'm getting from point A to point B. Maybe tomorrow it's something way different, but today it is not. If you look at all of this stuff, if you look at the drawing, if you look at the environment that I'm drawing it in, it creates the feeling of, you know, that this creature is right at home. And that is the idea that I want to achieve with the Morpha project at all, at, all, at all times. I want to achieve that this creature lived here, or, well, you know, ha give you a decent look on what what and how he look uh, how it lives and that is the important part i want to make sure that the environment is there to represent it of course you know the environment looks like an emblem so like a shield emblem which is good because you know that gives uh, that gives us more lead way towards the centraliza central central uh, central centralization of the object at hand that needs to be focused by the eyes which is, you guessed it, the morphic itself. So these, so these, uh, this part of the drawing only serves to make sure that the eye-catching part of the morphic project is, and will be, the part, the top part, and that makes it uh, very important for me to make sure that all of this is working. Of course, you know, it's just a drawing, but. I need to make sure that it is correct. And I hope you all know what I'm talking about. If not, then well, I'll tell you later. It is just important that to make sure that the eye-catching part of the drawing is going to be, you know, the centralization of the morphog. Now, since that we're working on this anyway, and we're working on this now, what? 24-7? Maybe. Depends. Situational. I like to make sure that everything that I do is representable, is possible to draw, and I um, like to improve upon that. Experimentations and self-suffering is also a very important thing, because you know, you gonna be, well, it's not self-suffering, it's more like the experimentation of like, you're gonna learn to how to draw this today, and then Probably you will forget it later on, which can happen. But for instance, if you draw a skull, you know, a skull is easy if you know what you need to look for. But yeah, skull, oh no, this is a skull, yes, that's a cartoonish skull. If you want to draw a real skull, that's going to be a way more difficult part because then you need to represent a real skull part. And that is indeed a problem that I always need to deal with. The skulls, they are really pain in the ass to draw. It's not just skulls, it's actually everything that is rem remotely resembling humans. Which means that, you know, what is my weakness? Well, my weakness is that I'm not very good at drawing humans at all times. Because it's either the hands that are going to be ruined, or the eyes, or the face, or whatever. And, you know, I like to prevent that from happening, therefore, you know, I'm not resulting into drawing them. I will be able to draw them more, I will draw them more, I will draw them more, th more times, but not today. But yeah. Of course, you know, these little things, these little drawings, they're not a real thing, alright? These are the real things. The Morpha project is, for instance, is one one of those things that are is the real thing that I can draw. It just takes a lot of time and effort to draw because you know it is indeed an important thing of the drawing itself that makes it really hard to draw. You can of course combine all the drawings with each other if you want to, but it is more important that the Morpha project is and will be you know different and will stand out from the others. 
which means that you know there are different ways of doing things. Like one of those things is that I'm using the wrong brush. I didn't notice. I didn't fucking notice. Right? I did not use the right brush, right? No, I did. I did use the right brush. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. Ugh. It's always very hard to second guess if the brush that I used was the brush that was actually need to be used correctly. So, all of this, all of this matters in what I'm doing. It all remem it all, you know, gives me heads ups like what you're gonna do today? Well, I'm gonna be drawing this wood right here, and then you realize, like, well, that's a lot of steps already. Yes, because first of all, we have already done the Malfog itself, and now we are gonna be focusing on the other parts. And all these, all these parts, all these drawing parts, all these hard-earned, you know, experiences that I learned by trial and error, or by, you know, just doing it. <coughs> <coughs> They gave me insight into the problems at hand, which is which is indeed a thing that needs to be done. If I don't do that, well, you know, most of this most of the drawing is going to be just you know trashy or even worse than before. And as you can see, the tree is indeed a very problematic thing to draw. Why? Because the tree is connected to a lot of things. And the more the more stuff you draw, the more harder it gets to get from point A to point B. And that is the main reason why you cannot rush these trees. You cannot rush them because if you do, well, you know, you're gonna end up on the wrong side of the bar. So yeah, all of this, all of this matters. All of it matters. Even the tiny bits, even the things that you abandoned or the things that you don't want to use. They all matter in a matter of state. It depends always on when, how they matter. I mean, obviously, this is a very hard thing to draw. The, the tree, things, the roots, all of it. It's really hard to draw and comprehend like, well, where will it, where will it end and how will it end? And you always need to remember like, yes. There are always more roots I need to draw. And I don't need to be coming dizzy because of looking at the roots. They need to be unique. They need to be, you know, feel like roots. They don't need to be looking like roots. They need to feel like it. So sometimes, you know, your thoughts and your mind are not fully intertwined. And therefore, you know, you're going to make rookie mistakes or you're going to make mistakes that are easily overlooked. Like, for instance, drawing too hard or drawing too soft on your pencil. By pressing too hard or too soft, you're going to have these strokes, or you're going to have these strokes, or you're going to have these strokes. And that is a major difference. That's all in, in one stroke kind of amount. So, yeah. Of course, you know, this, this all of this, all of the... All of this matters, you know, all all these roots matter, all of it matters, but it's important to not let loose of the situation at hand. For instance, these roots are only representable by a long range view, so they are representable as a texture. They're not that important as the uh as the Malfoc itself. So therefore they might be able to you might have some little sketch or might have little problems in the drawing itself which then can be negated because you're looking at the picture from this point of view not this this is your point of view so 
you might be able to zoom in like this that is most likely able but th this is like almost at the maximum so yes you will be able to you will be able to you know see the roots but you won't be able to acknowledge that all of it is going to be there and that is important to make sure that you don't get you know detail that will over details that causes you to lose a lot of progress after you're done with all the stuff that you did like lighting or coloring or whatever this is why it's so important for most of these routes to reach the end goal but not to intertwine or interfere with all the building up towards it I know that this might sound stupid but a lot of this is just you know roots a lot of it doesn't make any sense why you should intertwine or do anything else with it but I like to always make sure that I have some roots left and right that I can work around with especially, especially if you are working your very best upon receiving the best amount of care to the roots itself Now, since we are now working towards the end goal here, you should always make sure that you have like different roots that intertwine or, you know, you don't want to stick on one route at the most cases. Because if you do so, you're going to be ending up like that, yes. You want to have an intertwine kind of appearance, so once you're working on one route, you should then work on a different route instead. That way, you will never be able to, you know, tell when one route ends and when one route begins. Because if you do so, it uh, actually creates more balance. Well, it doesn't create balance. It means it just creates more variety in the texture. Because now they're just tentacle kind of roots and not the roots that I want. They're not the rooty roots that you need to implement when things go bad or the roots that you know end up in the wrong side of a bar hmm. There you go. There you go. Easy as that. So yeah, um roots are important. Therefore, you know, you need to draw them. I mean, some people don't see the use of, you know, making sure that everything you do is responsible for all the stuff that needs to be done, but I like to be that guy. I like to be responsible for what I do, especially when it comes to drawing. I don't care. I care what people think about the drawing. I don't, you know. I'll take the criticism and do whatever I need to do to improve the drawing. But not because those people said that they need to improve the drawing. I'm just, you know, seeing what I can do with the improvement. If I did see that, what they saw. If I don't see that, what I saw, then mo most likely I will be asking further, like, what and how did you see it? Or where did you see it? And then, you know, you ask further and further. Until you come to the solution like, ah, alright, so I need to be more worried about that. Or next time I need to be tipping more attention upon that part. And that is indeed a thing that you need to make sure of. You know, if you if you improve upon yourself like the I do, I improve by trial and error. Well, what does trial and error mean? Well, it is one of the ways of learning. You learn by mistakes. You learn by the mistakes and solve them. 
You don't learn by the mistakes and then run away, by the way. You learn by the mistakes and solve them. Of course, you know, that is one of the most hardest things to do because, you know, you need to learn and acknowledge your mistakes that you made and say, like, well, fuck it, I will try to save this part, so allow me to see if I can fix it. And then, you know, you try to fix it and then you learn how to fix it. So next time, next time when such, such a thing can occur, you don't be that guy who is like, I have no idea how to solve this solution. Please help me out on this one. Yeah, you are not that person. You're the person who knows exactly how to fix it once that new, once that thing occurs again. It's like, oh, I have seen this in a book once. I can do it now again. That kind of fixing. You know to how to fix it because you already challenged yourself to do so. And the more you do it, the more the more the f the more you do that exact solving, the more better you get at it. For instance, I could not draw a bird, but the more I drew a bird, the more better I get at it. I didn't quit because I could not draw a bird. Pfft, do you see me quitting? No, hell no. But of course, you know, trial and error always takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of mind towards it. Because you're like, and now, what do I need to do now? I have no idea what I need to do, and I have zero clues of how to fix this problem. And then you need to sit down with yourself and think like, well, now what? Of course, your mind is always ready to offer you solutions. Some solutions might be stupid, or some solutions might be like, ah, yes, if I do that kind of solution, probably a lot of people will, you know, not like it. Or, you will totally regret this solution if you're gonna choose number B, or number C. It's like pressing a button and you don't know what the button does. That is most likely the worst solution you could ever go for, yeah. It's like, you could press the button, why? Because it looks pretty. And it's like, that's a great argument. I will push the button, and then you know, suddenly a whole, f or suddenly a whole cornfield explodes into popcorn. Yeah. That is, uh, it's not a very smart move to anger to anger a farmer who just wanted to make some mice, and then you know, you turn it into popcorn. That is actually one of the most funniest things I ever saw: mice turning into popcorn. It's like, whoa! It turns inside out, and then it pops. Ooh. Fascinating. It's quite funny that only certain types of mice actually works on it uh, to make popcorn. So if you want to make mice out of normal popcorn, nah, that doesn't work. It needs a certain amount of uh, sugar combi uh, combining force. Anyway, you need sugar mice for that. Um, so yeah. Um, that is a thing that needs to be worried about. You need to fi you need to fi find and sol solve your own problems. If you cannot do that, then well, you know, you the trial and error won't work. You need to solve it. If you don't solve it, then well, um, a lot of things are going to go back to a very terrible state because you know you're stuck with something that you cannot solve. The other way is ask for guidance, like ancestral guidance, whatever. Just guidance. If you go for guidance, good for you. I mean, you know, a lot of people ask for guidance. A lot of people ask for guidance upon anything or everything. It all depends on what you what your solution is like. I cannot solve this, so I need to ask a professional to know how to solve it. Yes. Most likely that's what you want to know. That's what you want to hear. Sometimes a solution can be solved by, you know, taking a, taking a step in the right direction. A solution taken to the right step in the right direction makes it more reliable to, you know, you're, you're busy thinking about like, oh, I wish I had done this instead of that. And then boom, you did that instead of that. And therefore, you know, you're finally able to solve the solution. For instance, these ones right here are so hard to draw. Yes, true. And then I'm looking here, and I'm looking back there, 
I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm looking and what do I see? I see a problem. If you take a big, if you take a good look at this, you can see the problem already arriving that I'm having right now. So, what is the problem and what what is the problem what is the problem has to do with this? Well, we have a problem with the drawing. What drawing? Well, you see it. You see it in your face. The roots. And we have 30 minutes and we have and we have 20 minutes to solve this. All right, I can do this. The main issue is that these drawing that these roots are yes, these roots are there true. But they have more of a feel of not being roots. They don't feel like the wood roots that you see on a root on a wooden root. So therefore you need to fix out how to do that. Well, you're just gonna be casually making the lines, the thick lines that you have here already. You're gonna make them crowded. What? Crowded? And how you solve that then? What 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 does this achieve? Well this achieves the effect the after effect that you need to solve your damn root problem. Because the roots are all over the place, normally the roots lead to one place and then end to the other. But because you created too many roots that are always connected, which happened, yes, it happened, it happened, it happened, it happened, you're now going to be looking for something like this. So what I just did is actually solving the problem that I had. I had too many roots, therefore I blur the vision of the roots to create the root effect that I want. Of course this is gonna be of course this is gonna be a really pain in the ass to do because I need to make sure that I don't overdo it, otherwise, you know, it will be visible too much. But yeah. Making sure that you have roots and making sure that those roots are connected or you know not fully connected but at least connected to each other causing the effect of roots to appear see that is more like it that is looking like a sturdy old root again instead of you know embracing the problem that we had we are solving the problem by casually drawing over it and because we're drawing over it, it creates the effect of roots, and the effect of roots, of course, it is a very nasty little effect that takes place. You normally want to avoid this kind of effect from happening because you're busy, too busy with, you know, want to create the roots in peaceful manner. But you know, because I left too many open places and too long strokes, the root effect needs to be there to create the effect we want because too many open places means that this root effect doesn't work All right. Now we can take a look at this. That is more like it. But there is something missing here. As you can see, the connection between the both places here are still out of place. This part, this part right here is correct. This part right here is not correct. So if we then select the part we want to change, we can do that by hmm, we want to select the part we want to select, which is this part right here. And now we can say, well, we transform it. How are we going to transform it? Well, we're going to transform it like this. Let's see if this works.
Hmm. Did that do the job? Probably yes. Because now we have free space to work around with. Alright. We're gonna deselect it. We're gonna start over. And why are we doing this? Just to make sure that we have the connection parts between us. And as you can see, the vines and all the stuff that goes around with it creates the effect that we want. Hmm. Should fill up this part then first. All right. I need to fix this part. Now I want to just get this thing up and rolling. Alright.
ideig. Alright, uh, fixing that part up. Should have not done this and then I should not have done it, but it still it works. Alright. to get the soft erase over this.
I knew it. Oh, God dang it. 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 Oh, it's think, think. Because we're dealing with a big giant. So we had a problem here. <sighs> Side effect is no longer shown. Except here. That's more like it. I now no longer see the face that I copied. Alright, so copying it is no longer an option. If I would have copied it, it would actually have been bad. Alright, um, da -da -da, and three minutes left. Well, let me just take a look at it. Jeez, we are not even halfway there. Um, so yeah, um, this took me a while to get, but uh, it, it is looking quite fine now. Hopefully now, uh, after, uh, hopefully tomorrow we will get even further with it, and then uh, it, we should not have any problems then. Um, all right. So I'll wish you all a lovely day, and I'll catch you all next time. Until then, bye.